Uh, we were approached by a company, Huntley Healthcare Diagnostics Limited. They gave us the task of redesigning their current fetal contraction monitor to make it either more accurate or cheaper to produce. We tried to address both. I think we kept the accuracy. I wouldn't say we necessarily improved it, but we did keep the accuracy. But we definitely reduced costs by a remarkable amount. I was taught Ohm's Law when I was three. Um, my father's influence has played a lot in it. Uh, I've always, I've always done electronics. I've got even, even though I don't study electronics at the moment, I've got quite a big and extensive background in it. So it's second nature. People look at me. Obviously, I'm blonde, and they automatically assume I'm a bimbo. I work in Macklin, and you know, men come in and they don't want to speak to me. So yes, it is an issue, but I don't see it as a problem. I think you can rise above that and prove to them that we're just as capable as men. Women, especially with design, engineering can be a lot about design. Women, are, they do that, you know, that's, that's what women are known for. I don't understand why it's perceived as a male discipline when we, we're just as good as the men. I think better in some respects. <laughs> okay, well, my project was based at the University of Liverpool at the Pancreatic Cancer Research Unit. And we were investigating how certain proteins can be used to identify cancerous cells within the pancreas and whether that allows nanoparticle technology to be a viable treatment in the future. I've always enjoyed science, particularly biology, and obviously this year I chose um, that I'd like to pursue a career in medicine. So I was obviously interested in some sort of area of science to do with the human body. And I heard about the Nuffield Bursary Scheme through school, and I applied and put that genetics and oncology as my area of interest, and I was lucky enough to be offered a placement at this um, area.